The Trout Flies in Mary Orvis Marbury's book, Favorite Flies and Their Histories, published in 1892, are illustrated and listed in alphabetical order. So the first of those is the alder. And the alder is an imitation of the alder fly, the alder bug, which has a very short lifespan as an adult. The larvae are aquatic, so these flies tend to populate bushes along the side of streams, dropping their eggs into the water. This is a very old pattern. It was old when Mary put it in her book, and the illustration is by her father, Charles Orvis. I'm going to tie the fly as closely as I can to match the illustration and not so much the way that this fly is currently listed in recipes. So I am using claret thread because the fly does appear to have a um, slightly reddish head on it. I think claret works about the best as anything to do that. The tag is uh, gold, so I'm using a silver gold tinsel. I am tying it with the gold f down towards the hook. That way when I r uh, fold it over to wrap, the gold will show. And I'm going to wrap down just a couple wraps. This is a very wide tinsel so it doesn't take a lot, but I'm going to wrap down a couple wraps on the tail or on the hook, around on, on the hook bend and then wrap up back up to where the body will be and I will be covering over the end of that tinsel with the body so it doesn't really matter how far I wrap but I just want to catch it in, do some securing wraps underneath, and then clip out the tinsel. I am tying this on a 12 2x hook, and that's about as big as you want this. Maybe you go to a 10, but really down to a 16. Well, you know what are what size are the alder flies in the area where you fish and uh, this is a wet fly. It's probably going to be in nature. The alder flies die, fall into the water where the trout or other fish will eat them. The body on the fly is hurl, peacock hurl. So I have three strands. Uh, because the hurl that I have is fairly thin and I want to avoid lots of wraps, but I have clipped out are clipped off the tender tips of those hurl and then I will wrap it back up over where I have that tinsel tied in and then I'm going to do a rope so just pull out a stretch of thread wrap back up and then I'm going to go around my thread Kind of tie in that end, the end of it where it attaches to the shank. Bring my thread up to the front of the hook, and then I'm going to lift that thread loop and lift my hurl into that thread loop. Grab that with hackle pliers, and I'm going to twist it. What would look to be counterclockwise from the top. If my rope is hanging down, it would be clockwise. And I think this is the way to twist to make sure that it doesn't untwist as I wrap it on the shank. But I can always twist it more as I wrap it. So the thread down the middle of this twist of hurl helps to strengthen it and uh, keep it together as I wrap. So 
So I am twisting it up a little bit more as I wrap it. It'll be a clockwise twist from the bottom. And it's a pretty full body. So touching wraps, even maybe overlapping wraps. As I get up to where I'm going to tie in the front hackle and the wing, I can just kind of uh, build up a little bit there so that I have a straight edge on that, maybe I'd call it a full edge to tie in against with the hackle. That'll help the hackle spread. It is a soft hackle that is imitating just the legs on the insect. But the illustration by Charles Orvis seems to have that hackle coming up kind of along the side of the wing as well. So I can clip that out. And for the front hackle, I'm using this hen, soft hen hackle, uh, it does look like it's a, a lighter brown in the illustration. And maybe this particular one that I've chosen has got too much of the darker brown. The kind of current recipes call for a black. I suppose legs on the insect are really, it's a dark insect. So if you look up alderfly, on the internet sources, it'll show a very dark fly. So then I'll just tie, I've, I've taken my feather and stripped off one side of the, of the fibers. And I have to be careful as I do that because as I strip those, it takes part of the stem. And so it, it creates a very thin stem. But then separate out that tip Tie the tip in and clip it out. And then it's it's a pretty long stem. I could probably wrap it just with my fingers, but I'm going to attach my hackle plier to that stem. And then I can pull back on those fibers as I wrap them. Make sure that they are wrapping backwards. And I'll just wrap it till either I'm out of fibers or it looks like I've got enough for this particular fly. It's not a real heavy hackle. If you look at the illustration, that's probably enough. So I've got a few extra there that'll clip out or snap out when I snap the stem. So I'm doing three catch-in wraps. And I can let go of the pliers, pull everything back, wrap up over it. This starts to kind of wrap the head. I don't want too much wrap there though because I do have to tie in the wing yet. And then I think I can just grab that stem and snap it out. I like to do that rather than cutting because I get a cleaner, a cleaner uh, tie-in point there. I don't have that little stem sticking out. Then I'm going to take and just kind of push down on all those hackle fibers to tie in the wing. Now I am using this turkey feather for the wing. Looks like this feather has been dyed orange, but the illustration kind of has an orangish wing too. And I don't know that um, the color is particularly meaningful in tying the fly. Uh, the alder bug wings look to be clear, but a dark clear. So I've clipped two sections of the turkey wing, and that's about uh, the width of the gap. And I've put them together so that they're facing towards each other. And I'm going to lay that on top of the fly with that wing hanging out past the hook bend and then just take and wrap that down a couple of loose wraps and then cinch it down and then wrap under it as well. And 
and then I'm going to clip out the butt ends. without clipping anything else and then wrap up over that clip out section there try to hide the butt ends under the thread head okay and then I'm going to whip finish that the alder fly a very old English fly but applicable in the U.S. as well, or anywhere where there are alder flies that live along the streams where you fish. I am putting some cement on that head. The cement I use is a diluted goop, and it uh, when I put the cement on, it'll look like it darkens the head, but as that head dries, uh, it'll dry clear.